Hello, my name is Megan Mulqueen, and I am the lead teacher and director of a Reggio Emilia inspired nature based program located in Ojai, California, called Acorn Community School. The topic of this blog is why timeouts don't work. So, if you're a parent or an educator or a caregiver of young children between the ages of two and five, oftentimes children, you'll find children will act out in ways that are aggressive or angry or they'll scream or they'll yell or they'll throw things at us or hit. And we oftentimes, instead of finding out what it is that's upsetting them or why they're acting in this way, oftentimes parents will just say, oh, you're getting a timeout. And so what happens during timeouts is that a child is oftentimes left to go sit by themselves somewhere without actually any parent. And the intention that most parents have is that they think that their child is going to reflect and think about you know, how they didn't act in ways that were appropriate or ways that were unkind. When actually research shows that when you put a child in time out, the whole time they're thinking how mean their parent is and how angry they are or how upset they are, they actually don't get to connect and problem solve and share their feelings or why they acted in the way they did. And there's really no benefit from timeouts, even though parents think there are. And I'd like to suggest an alternative approach to timeouts if you're open. Um, oftentimes at my school, when children act in ways that are unloving or unkind or they act out, the first thing I think is, are their basic needs met? Are they hungry? Are they thirsty? Are they tired? First, I try my best to meet those needs, but in addition to meeting those needs, those basic needs, I realize that when a child misbehaves, it means that there's a disconnect somewhere. Somehow, some way, they're feeling mad or sad or upset, and that's another reason why children can act out, is because, you know, say that you were, you were gone all day and your three-year-old runs to hug you, but the first thing you wanna do is go change your clothes and make dinner, and you have all these things that you're thinking about, but all your child really wants to do is connect with you. And when your child doesn't get that attention they need, they start acting out. They might yell or scream or become uncooperative, and you, you've had a long day at work, you're fr you, know, you don't have the tolerance perhaps that you might have had first thing in the morning. So you just, you, your child is disconnected and what they're seeking is connection. And so the first thing, the first solution is when a child is acting out, are their basic needs met? Where is the disconnect? Finding out why, why are you acting this way? What's going on? Are you, you know, finding out more information? Oftentimes there's a reason. And it's our job to find the reason so that we can then come up with a solution and start healing wherever the dis whatever, whatever the disconnect is. Um, and so basically, also another reason why children act out is because it's not that they won't, it's that they can't. Are your expectations realistic for the age stage that your child is in? You can't expect a three-year-old to go through three hours of errands in the car with you and then you know, you don't know why they're grumpy or they're acting out or they're shouting or hitting their brother and sister. Um, it's about having realis realistic expectations for the age stage and where your child is at. Um, Three-year-olds don't have the capacity to regulate their emotions in the same way as adults. And oftentimes we project our own mental capacities onto our children and they're, they're just not there. Their brains are not, they're not capable. Their brains are not fully developed. And so, like I said before, timeouts can lead to anger and disconnection and don't actually provide solution-oriented thinking. So when a child does something that's not okay, our job is to find out why and then to also say, well, how can we do this in a different way? To share, you know, how does this make me feel? How does it make your sister feel? To, to say, you know, check in with your, your sister and say, hey, that was an accident or I'm feeling mad and I didn't mean to hit you, are you okay? And then the child who, who, who was on the other end can say, no, I'm not okay, that made me feel really mad and really sad. And then, so you have your child who is the perpetrator, so to speak, can, you can say, well, what can we do to make you know, your sister feel better? And it's about solution-oriented thinking. Like if you, do, if you forget to put your helmet on, on the scooter, then for two weeks we have 
to do a safety check and we have to make sure that the helmet is on before a child goes out and uses their scooter or there's there's consequences um, and basically we want to give children meaningful experiences that help build connection and build their brain capacity so um, the focus is on teaching lessons and on making things right and so some solutions to alternatives to time out are time ins Often child when a child oftentimes when a child is having a hard time self-regulating, there's a couple different ways that we can go about supporting that. Uh, we can give time in. There can be a space in the house, it's a quiet area where we go sit with them. They help it helps them to calm down, getting them out of the situation that was really hard for them to be in, maybe moving them outside to a different location, going to kick a ball with them to get their frustration out. Helping to move the body helps move energy, helps move the feelings that are inside that they're having a hard time dealing with. Um, also, having we want to support them in getting out of emotional overload and really connecting and not feeling like when they do something right, we love them, and when they do something wrong, they're in trouble and the love is withdrawn. You wanna keep your connection with your child strong even as you go through these difficult times. It's about connecting and then redirecting. So if you're connecting, you're finding out what's going on, what's present, why is my child acting this way, and then you can redirect once your child really feels that you're authentically connecting with them. And they want to feel that and they can't it's hard for a child to move through something if they don't really feel like their parent cares them or is really cares about their feelings so if you're it's about being present it's about really getting down to their level and looking in their eyes and saying hey what's going on i'm noticing this and that and reflecting what you're seeing and not saying you know you're a bad boy or you're a bad girl it's not about labeling or judging it's about saying hey i'm noticing this what's going on how can we do, what can we do next time if you're feeling sad or mad? Using your words, giving them tools. Um, and it's really about making sure that we teach solutions instead of just leaving a child sitting by themselves, not really having any solution, not learning anything from this experience. And I hope that in the future, when your child is acting in ways that are challenging for you as a parent or a caregiver or educator, you'll remember some of these tools and strategies and apply them so that you can have connected, loving relationships with your children. Because research shows, and we all know, that when children feel connected to and listened to and heard, they do better in school, they do better in sports, there's less behavioral issues, and they're just there's overall just more love, loving connections and relationships for that child, and they're healthier inside and out. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this blog, and if you'd like more information about Acorn Community School or more parenting resources, I have articles and books on my website. You can visit www.acorncommunityschool.com. Thank you so much, and have a great rest of your day.